What's going on, everyone? This is Michael Stewart Isaacs. And this is Shemega Ebony. And this is your next edition of Sunday, Sunday Stacks. Stacks. Yes, Sunday Stacks. We are back and we are excited about this week's episode. So, what we're going to talk about is a little bit taboo. And what we're going to really get you all into is a whole new space that we're going to take you somewhere that you're familiar with, but we're going to elevate your next level. And what we're doing that with is the topic of offending people. That's right, everyone. We all get offended. The question is, why do we get offended? And with this episode, we're going to kind of just unpack just different types of offenses, why people get offended. Why don't people have the right to kind of say what they say and mean what they mean? And why do people take it so personally to the point where we can hold grudges or not want to advance people and give them opportunities? So have you ever been offended before, Shemeka? I used to get offended all the time. I mean, it was a marathon of offense before I realized the power that you give someone to be offended by what they do whether it's their intent or an act of ignorance, it was just too much energy I found to hold someone accountable to how I feel about what they did versus me dealing with myself and exploring why I'm offended. Yeah, and I think with me and time, I just, I've had to get over easily being offended by simple things. I think as a kid, I grew up in Brooklyn and you know, anybody knows anything about that environment, all our Brooklyn listeners, <laughs> we basically kind of grew up where everything offended us, you know, the way somebody looked, the way somebody did something. And then, you know, so growing up and coming to the South and growing up in North Carolina, I had to learn how not to be so easily offended. But then I just realized that each city, each environment you're in is different. And I just had to learn how to kind of tone down a little bit of what I thought made me offended by other people. And more importantly, I had to really start to check myself because I realized that I was offending a lot of people by the way I came across. So it was one of those, I guess, introspective moments of really understanding both what triggers me to be offended, which most of the time is disrespect. <laughs> and I'm sure other people can relate. Um, and then the things that I was doing to trigger other people, which I sometimes think is just my art, my gift of speaking. Sometimes I talk too much <laughs> and sometimes that offends people. And I had to learn these things over time and learn how to do things like this, take an outlet like this, the Sunday stacks and, you know, what we do with this podcast and really just use my gifts in a way that can connect and hopefully let people know that this is what I'm called to do. And hopefully sometimes it may offend somebody that, that I'm called to do this because either they may not speak as well as I do or they may not have the same topics to cover, but I can't be responsible for what other people are offended. And that's another thing I had to learn about offending people. I'm not responsible for it, but on some levels, once I start to listen and understand some of the things that I've been doing that's offensive, it's my job whether or not I want to correct it to start to build and nurture new relationships. Yeah, and I guess the extreme that I came to in my own personal discipline is to imagine how idolatrous being offended is to our will or our wants or the way we think or expect things to be. There's scripture that talks about um, how offenses will come, like no doubt, like they're going to manifest. Uh, woe unto those that are the offenders in these cases for the children of God. So, you know, when we think about it through that lens as well, it's still based on perception. It's based on how someone takes in the information that you're giving out. Um, and this week we had a great conversation with my friend and I just lifting up uh, how we've learned to use guardrails in this world of sensitivities and offense. And I think both of us had the same agreement from childhood or an understanding like, if I can say it, then I'm willing to repeat it, you know, and my AKA version is I said what I said. Um, that is to own what we're saying. It's not about, you know, being caught up in gossip to offend people. But if you say it, you got to be man, woman and child <laughs> mature right. up enough to own what you said and not back down. And I've lost relationships because of me owning what I said. <clears throat> um, but, you know. I said what I said. So if it applied to you, then you need to grow with it. But I can't live my life trying to nurture everyone that could be hurt by what I said, because maybe that was the iron you need to shift to that next level that you're supposed to be at. Yeah, And I think when we think about offending people, 
you know, sometimes you don't even realize you're offending people in the moment, right? Sometimes people take their own uh, thoughts and their anger towards other people or someone else who took advantage of them, and then they start to project it on other people, not to give anyone a ground again to take advantage of them. And I think ultimately when it comes to these, this space of offense and just trying to grow from not allowing ourselves to be easily offended because it just allows for us to have a bigger paradigm in regards to our ability to control ourselves, to not get caught up in silliness and get yeah, caught ourselves in violent moments. Yeah, I mean, think about all this, these car rage moments we see on television or hear about. A lot of it is because someone was offended in a moment, and one moment now can either take a life, cause injuries. I mean, so much violence can come from simple offenses, and we have to really ask ourselves, what is going on society in regards to why are we feeling so attacked by everyone's critiques or their opinions? And the fact that we ourselves sometimes have critiques and opinions of others, and we have to balance that. If I can give a critique and opinion, then I must also have the ability to take that. You know, it's funny. You wish that schools or something would teach us how to not be offended or something, like have that <laughs> as a, a training class or something. <laughs> well, it's also into the power of operationalizing the scripture that says, be harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. Mm. So in that which you are saying, the correction, the opinion, you know, your righteous stance on whatever, is your response, your comment, your statement being delivered in a way that's as harmless as a dove? Mm -hmm. A dove is harmless, but yet intentional. It has a direction and it manifests its, its outcome. So are, are what kind of outcome is happening because of you releasing what you feel like needs to be said. Mm. Release the doves, y'all. You hear Ms. Shemekka? She said, release the doves. And I say that, I think that's a good little code word for the offenses that we think we have. Sometimes we have to sometimes address things within ourselves that's really going on that we can even take hold to anything being offensive to us. Sometimes we might even have to listen to things that sound like it offends us and listen to any grains of truth that might improve us and get us to a position where we can actually grow and be better. Um, one thing I can genuinely say about me is like, I really don't want anything from people. So therefore I don't expect much from people in regards to being offended and not being offended. I'd rather people be honest with me and, and truly straight up with me and how I communicate with them and how they communicate. And if you're authentically yourself, then honestly offenses should neither bother you nor be anything that you're concerned about committing. So. And I would say, I don't know if it's growing up in Kinston, uh, growing up in, in the 80s, uh, but uh, something that I hold near and dear to when we come to this is like, we have to, you know, it's not thick skin, but we have to be moldable. We have to be able to accept correction. And uh, I have offended a lot of people in my lifetime <laughs> intentionally. Uh, and unintentionally more so, I call it my Edward Scissorhands season, uh, but I couldn't allow myself to be limited by that. I had to posture myself because I had a work to do. And in many cases, I, would, I was the catalyst that God used to manifest somebody else's mature opportunity, uh, their opportunity to grow and, and become more sharp in their service, in their work, in their leadership. Um, in their living day to day. And those that couldn't handle that aspect about me didn't last long. I used to ask God why, and then I stopped because I understand, like, the, if you're easily offended, you can't walk with me mm. because I, I, I am the iron of sharpest iron. I'm a leader's leader. And that just shows me where your readiness is. No shame, no shade. We can walk at some point if you choose to align yourself with being able to be moldable and sharpened. I love it. And I, I like that notion of being sharpened. And, you know, the, the one thing I'll add to this part of the topic is just cancel culture. We utilize cancel culture all the time for things that offend us. Yet in America, particularly, you know, your First Amendment is freedom of speech. You know, <laughs> and I know it's not always easy speech. It's not easy to hear people, you know, want to curse a lot or people that want to just kind of be disrespectful and insulting to other people for various reasons. And, of course, we understand what's going on in the times. But essentially, we have to find a resiliency within ourselves to really not put ourselves in a position that we are the, the moral superiority in any capacity mm -hmm. in terms of being offended by anything, right? If 
there's a universal, uh, you know, controller that is balancing all things and let that be the case. But for us to want to balance the world based on what we're offended by, we'll be fighting forever, people. So we, we definitely need to start ironing out these offenses and really get people to a place where they just get to either work out what's truly bothering them or find more resiliency not to be offended by most things. Because like Shemekha said, people like us to move the way we are, we straight iron and we ready to be sharp blades. And there's so many things out here that we're going to have to offend some people, even in our practices in business, even in our yeah. practices in community. I'm going to have to offend you because the ways that we're going about aren't serving all people, aren't getting the results for right. enough. So I'm going to have to offend you with my presence. I'm going to have to offend you with my being because I can no longer go for the foolishness and the intolerable anymore. And that goes for people that look like me. That goes for others across the table. you got to understand offenses will come. But sometimes you must be offended if you're living in wrong, if you're not living your true righteous truth that we can truly start to work with. And that's what we're about with Sunday Stacks. I'm not here for you. I'm here to stack myself up Sunday to Sunday to make myself more perfected. And we hope that you catch on because we don't mean to offend you. We mean to empower you. And that's what we hope to shift this to. So with that being said... Shifting to our next topic of empowerment, you know, I had the opportunity as we look at our weekly reflections, I have to share some great news, you all. I had an opportunity this week to speak at the University of North Carolina, and it was an amazing opportunity, yes, to Yay. speak to the University of North Carolina at their Innovation uh, Center, Carolina, uh, Innovate Carolina, which is a center on the campus of UNC, invited me out to be a guest speaker at a diversity panel that they had in regards to uh, different students looking for jobs and career choices as well as entrepreneurial paths. And I was able to have the podium with two great um, you know, co-panelists uh, um, that I just really enjoyed the conversation we were having in regards to our careers and giving some great tips and insights to the students as well as different people who came to this uh, event looking for ways of being inspired as well as ways of creating opportunities for other groups and communities. Um, Shemekha had an opportunity to, you know, join the event. Did you have any thoughts of insights that you said saw this week at the event? Yeah, it was really nice to see how reflective of um, intergenerational um, various, uh, the diversity was definitely on point. Um, that was nice to also hear from some of the students that they're kind of really ahead of the game um, and what they're in pursuit of and their entrepreneurship equity, uh, health equity endeavors and what they're doing. So I met some incredible young people that are moving and shaking. Um, I, what I loved from the panelists is that they all gave varying perspectives from having to have a career pivot um, to have to from moving back home with your parents after college uh, and being able to adjust with the times, especially being invested in very young and then, you know, being with 25 years experience, it was very awesome to hear you lift up that, you know, there are going to be mountains and, and valleys that come, but the consistency uh, helps you move with the times. But you you share something very powerful with these young people to remain flexible and always be open to learn and don't minimize uh, who you are today to be who you are going to become and doing what you plan to do in the future. Oh, wow. That was amazing. I wish I heard that person speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those out there, just to mention um, on our social media platforms, we have, of course, the I Am Brilliant. You are too on Instagram as well as this is I Am Brilliant. We have um, different platforms, but you can also find some of the clips on my personal page, Michael Stewart Isaacs, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-S-T-E-W-A-R-T-I-S-A-A-C-S. So it's at all of that <laughs> on Instagram. But yes, definitely find the student I Am Brilliant. Um, you can find different clips um, we're going to have stuff on our different YouTube channel platforms we have this Sunday Stacks YouTube channel uh, Brilliant Bunch was in the house too the Brilliant Bunch oh my goodness that. yes that was the best part honestly I love the <laughs> fact that not only did I get a chance to speak and be a part of a, a, a wonderful panel that I learn from all the time too when I'm on a panel I'm learning from listening to the other leaders and speakers as well as I learn from the people who ask questions at the end that was the most amazing part to have have the students and all the different you know people who attended the event to come up later and ask questions and network of sorts but really kind of trying to figure out that next little nugget they need but most importantly 
my sons, Mr. Chi Alexander and Ade Maximus, these great new young leaders of the Brilliant Bunch, they came out and were able to show the world who they really were. I mean, these young men are able to walk in any room and truly just uh, understand how to be amongst adults and also be a light to so many people, you know, and mm -hmm. it's amazing to see what they're becoming. We call them the brilliant bunch, you know, mm -hmm. and they're, they're just they're just already so poised um, watching myself and their mother, you know, work hard. And that's, again, Sunday Stacks, family, community, company. We, we got to be the examples we see. You got to bring your young people to the rooms today as you're learning, because what you may not know today, you want them to start sucking, you know, soaking it all in. So that way, when they're ready and they're older, they're not trying to be in the rooms figuring it out. They're in the mm -hmm. rooms leading it. Yeah, one thing, and I'll plug this to those um, entrepreneurs and small business owners that feel like you can't take your family uh, to some of the things you do. The, the younger you expose your children to what you do, the more comfortable and familiar it is for them. It was nothing for our six-year-old to raise his hand in the Q&A part and we not have to tremble and worry if he's going to ask about the Ninja Turtles. Um, most often as parents, we want to minimize embarrassment and noise so we wouldn't allow our, our children to, to speak up. But with the Brilliant Bunch, we welcome those. We just we honor the spaces with the timing and giving them what they're looking for, which is the pursuit of answers, but also leaning into their inquiry, giving them space to ask questions. So Chi went up to two of the panelists and asked them questions afterwards that really stumped them. They were surprised um, to 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 hear those questions about their interest income and their interest in their business. Uh, those questions, they were surprised and caught off guard, but it was a learning opportunity for both. A, for panelists not to overlook the younger people in the crowd that are standing in line and waiting uh, to talk to you because they are the generation you want to be able to tap into. And then also, uh, Chi gets this opportunity to exercise his voice in having these conversations with um, older entrepreneurs and season so that, that he can see himself 30 years ahead as to what to look out for in those guardrails. So I'm, I'm happy that we got a chance to support our incredible husband here and father in the work that he's doing in community. Oh, well, I thank you. And you've just been a, a constant leader teaching me, you know, what it truly means to foster community and connect with people. Um, sometimes entrepreneurship can be a solo, as we hear the solopreneur term, <laughs> right. but you truly can be a, a lone ranger, a, you know, a, a, you know, a lone wolf and all these different things. So sometimes you have to take the insights and the things, the bumps and bruises, and the things you've learned, the successes you've had, and you have to share with others to get them on their right position. So mm -hmm. as we look to get ready to close, we want to go into what we call the Wiz of the Week. Yes, the Wiz of the Week. This week, we want to uh, talk, stay on our main topic, which is about offending people. And something that couldn't be ignored through the wire was the, what I would call the Keith Lee effect. Yes, Keith Lee is a online social media influencer who has found a niche in reviewing different restaurants across the country. And recently, he had a stop in the last few weeks in the city of Atlanta and didn't quite leave the most favorable reviews for some of the Atlanta restaurants. Nothing that was offensive to most people's standard, just really giving authentic reviews and outlines of what he saw. But it set off a firestorm across the internet where people started to ask the bigger question about customer service and entrepreneurship, particularly in our African-American community. And this is a family conversation, but we really want to make sure that as we look at this conversation, we don't miss the point which is, are we truly giving the best customer service and other things? So when I look at the Wiz of the Week this week, I want us to really think about ourselves as we're asking these questions as a social media, but it's a real problem if we're not doing the best we can to create environments and atmospheres that don't only just look good, but other people feel good being inside our environments. Do you have any thoughts about this? Well, <clears throat> I didn't know this young man before now. Um, obviously I'm not on the in crowd, <laughs> but uh, uh, my takeaway was the shock and, 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 and I guess surprised to hear of the death threats coming to his family, like the death threats 
potentially coming from people that look like him. Like, that's the bigger problem. Like, that we're so diehard for someone or some organization or some business or some principle that it gets you locked up that will harm somebody else's family. Like, where is the black love for real? Or is it just the black love of the economic power that we're after and not real unity? Mm. Wow. Let's say that again. Are we after economic unity or are we just after the money? Are we just after not really growing and fixing the problems our community has been faced and plagued with? So part of that does come back to simple things like when we're building establishments and we're not building it for our own enjoyment, but also if someone else from other cultures come into our facility, we want to start being known to be top of the line, the best that you can have in the marketplace. When people think of black or black people being behind it you know think about like blacksmiths back in the days you go to the local blacksmith these people were actually black they were the best crafters creators and all that we have to get back to that mentality that we want to be known for the best the best service the best experiences the best customer relationships all of these different things that we can still grow our businesses and again sunday stacks as we look at the wizard of the week we just want to look at this keith uh, lee effect to just say that it's a bigger conversation than just one individual it's really about what has been exposed in this which is the various opinions it comes when it comes to our businesses our practices and again with sunday stacks fcc Family, community, company. And we got to have solid companies if we're going to last the next 100 years. And so. if you're one of these individuals that is out here dishing family threats, threatening this man's livelihood and these businesses, you need to quit. And if you're these people that are calling into these businesses to get them shut down and threatening staff, you need to quit. You need to have several seats. Something is mentally wrong with you and you need help. Because if you would think this would be okay to harm someone physically for a restaurant owner that could care less about you or your family or you coming to eat there, then you have really missed the mark on what black economics is supposed to look like. Our unified collective efforts. If we're draining people physically, emotionally, and financially, we're no benefit to the game. So get out. Go somewhere and take several seats because we don't need that energy here and what we're trying to build. Mm. Well, with that, we look to wrap up. Any announcements? Yes, we have some announcements. We are moving and shaking. Lead Her Ship uh, support group is going to be launching in December. This is for my women founders, small business owners, uh, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, leaders in C-suite, executive companies growing up the ladder, and you need a place to build your personal development, a place to check in, human being check-ins to make sure your wellness is going, then you want to join us in December. You can check that out at shemeca at gumroad.com. You'll see a couple of different courses coming on. We also, for those of you that joined us for our launching of the Community Bill of Rights, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are launching an action group starting in February. So if you want to get in on that leadership development group that is going to be cultivating the Community Bill of Rights into actionable outcomes, specific to your community and how you engage centering community as a tool using the community bill of rights you want to jump on that nine month action group that's launching in february 2024 and drum roll black girl magic market is turning mm -hmm. eight february 2024 and we are moving and shaking we are excited about celebrating entrepreneurship economic equity and gender equity gender pay equity when it comes to how we go after the bag and get it and change the game after we start moving in it and we're going to be having a mastermind and marketplace in february um, our location is going to be in charlotte so we're super excited if you're from forbes black carolinas we want to see you in the building if you're from black innovation alliance we want to see you in the building if you're from the global black women's chamber of commerce we want to see you in the building if you were the national coalition of black women rising we want to see you in the building if you are a part of an, a collective of people mobilizing through entrepreneurship and small business we got a space for you to and thought leaders we want to hear from you too so come on through that mastermind and marketplace in february charlotte make sure you're liking and subscribing to sunday stacks and learn more and follow us to stay in the know and when those tickets are going to be coming up 
Awesome. So that's a lot that we are processing, but we are excited that there's so much coming down the pipeline. Again, we're here to feed the market. So we're thankful. Make sure you like and subscribe. Please leave any comments in the chat. We appreciate all you all that have been liking and subscribing. Tell a friend, tell a friend and definitely share. And thank you for joining us with this episode and edition of Sunday Stacks. And as we always say, I am brilliant, and you are too. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to this next edition next week.